regularly scheduled meeting of the things before we get to the senior center. Sunderland Select Board. I think I got the thumbs up by Jonathan. We apologize for our delay. We had some technical difficulties. I wouldn't say it's the first one that we've had. It won't be, I'm sure it won't be the last one, huh, John? Definitely will not. All right. So today's March 21st, 2022. First order of business is the uh, minutes of March 14th. Motion? I'm, shouldn't we approve the minutes of? A motion made? Second. Any discussion? No. All those I mean, out here, any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Next up is under new business, we have a one day alcohol license for May 21st. Yes, and um, we have the applicant via Zoom, Ms. Master Giovanni, um, and the relevant departments, fire police, uh, building and health agent, all I had no okay. issues with, no concerns with that. So the petitioner that you want us, you want to say something? That's an interesting picture in the background. What is it? This? Yeah. I live in, on the, I live in Rowley, Mass. That's the front of the window. And my, my friend painted yeah. it. Nice. It's the code. They have that's the ocean. Very interesting. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so. Anyway, so she lives in Waitley, and we, and Sunderland, it's really close, and it seemed like a nice outdoor venue, so that was the reason. Well, you know what the best part of living in Whiteley is, don't you? Mm -mm. The view of Sunderland. <laughs> Sunderland's pretty nice. We think so. Most of the time. Okay. Anybody have any questions? No. Well, we hope you have a great time. Forward. Okay. Well, I really appreciate it. May 21st should be a good time. It should be a little... The ice and snow should be melted by that time. So, it would be fun. Yeah. I know we went over to the park and I said it didn't it didn't look so great in February, but it'll I can picture it in May. <laughs> it'll green so. up. It'll green up that's it. they'll green up and I'm sure highway department or will be up there mowing, so it'll be much better. So yeah. all right. Okay. Anything else, Jeff? Looking forward to it. Um do you wanna take a vote to We will. Okay. Do yeah. you have anything else to say though? Oh no. Okay. Questions? Okay, so police, fire, everybody sign off on it, board right. out, whatever. And this is, just to clarify, for the one day liquor license. One day liquor. Okay. Motion to approve. I second. We have a motion made and seconded to approve a one day liquor license request for the town park on May 21st, 2022. It, all the boxes have been checked off on our form. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We have a 3-0. Congratulations. I hope you have a great day. All right. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Next, bye -bye. next up, Sugarloaf Gardens introduction. So, Kyle? Yes. Come uh, talk to us. So, yeah, just to introduce uh, Kyle Snow. Um, we're going to be opening up right on 25 Emerson Road, where Sugarloaf Nurseries used to be. Um, something similar to start, so name is Sugar Oak Garden. Um, this year I'll be focused with perennials, trees, shrubs, and some bagged goods and bulk good items. Um, and then if all goes well, which we're expecting and hoping, that uh, we'll kind of evolve from there. Um, next year probably add on some annual flowers, some other, some other different items from that point. And then down the road, we're hoping to kind of develop and improve the property, um, hopefully for the good for everybody. Uh, the building that's on site, for example, 
a little mm. worn down and yeah. a little bit of an eyesore. Uh, <laughs> a little tough. Yes, it is. So we're not using that really, kind of storage inside. Most of us, what we're going to be doing is focused on the outside. Uh, we just had a shed brought in kind of to run point of sale and all of that out of. So the building's kind of there for now. We can't really do anything with it at this point, but... Um, so did, so did the contractor that was working on North Main Street, have they come through and they've restored the area to... The sidewalk? Mm-hmm. I'm assuming they have, obviously the sidewalk's in place, I'm assuming they, assuming they have something this spring to finish, because it doesn't look like they backed the concrete sidewalk and the, they still have the sock all in place. Yeah. So I'm assuming this spring that... They'll have to come back and take that out. back uh, through, not just that, I'm assuming it's all been done the sidewalk. Yeah. And... and that was a sidewalk plus that's where the, that was their staging area for the uh, North Main Street project as oh, well. Oh, so the, yes, the staging area is clear. So they did clear that that's in December. All, that's yeah. all set? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, and again, I just I just asked because we just want to make sure that no, they did everybody's well happy when it's all done. Yeah, they did well by that. They it is. You, just, you tend to end up having to talk to more than one person. Yep. And when they tell you that that files staying doesn't mean that that pile isn't going to be used and might might shrink before you leave so it, you know it was not nothing nothing that's um that you're gonna nothing that everything can be worked out yeah, right it's, that's it, fine it, it's um we, you know they got something better than nothing but it's um it's hard to hard to talk about it two months before it's closed and even a month before it mm -hmm. because the guy that's closed, it might be not the guy you're talking to, but as far as I know, as far as all the rents and uh, life art, one of those runs for the state and stuff like that, they were right on time and uh, very diligent because uh, they don't want to ruin, ruin their reputation. So, Agree. Um, but this stuff, you know, very small part that, uh, that felt very good about them doing their thing. Sounds good. good and all of a sudden done, they followed through. They said they would do as much how they left everything. Okay. For the most part, other than the they probably just have the, the cementation barriers tend to get forgotten sometimes, so just have to make sure they get those out of there. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're coming to town, Kyle. I mean, I mean, Dave had a pretty good business there. Um, things just change in his life, so. But he had a good business. He was very, I mean, he was very good to, to the town. I mean, whenever we needed something, he was there and. You guys have a very, very good reputation as well. So, thank you. Yeah, we're hoping to build a strong relationship. Be here for a long time. Um, the management, the manager, and the team in place has a lot of experience in the garden center nursery field. Good. So, good. If you ever need anything, don't don't hesitate to to talk to Jeff. Okay. okay? Or you can one of us. We, we're available. Okay. okay. Um, or if you need, you know, to, if there's something that you see, let us know, okay. and, and we'll work with you. Like I said, we like we like to take the advantage of, you know, new businesses in town to come in, you know, introduce themselves, um, you know, get get your name out there. You know, if you want, let people know when you're going to start. Do you have an opening date yet? Uh, the plan right now, if all goes well in the next 10 days, is late next week. So 31st, 1st, we're probably going to kind of do a soft, kind of open but not overly announce it but we'll start to kind of make it known we said for the first couple of weeks we're to be a little bit slower but the plan right now hopefully is the end of next week so when you open it what What's your planned opening hours? What do you think, Monday through Sunday, or? Yeah, probably, yeah, seven days a week to start. I mean, April, May, into early June's, mm -hmm. probably the busiest time for that. And then we'll fine tune, but probably 8 a.m. to five to six. We might tweak it a little bit, depending on traffic flow coming in and out. Okay, good, yeah. good. All right, Monday through Sunday, eight to five approximately. Especially um, for the first couple months, why? I mean, that's you're going to be your busy time anyway. So yeah, it's typically the busiest 
Stress now, do you raise your own stuff or you bring it in, or how, how do you do that? Uh, bring it in. We, uh, we don't grow anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any questions? Yeah. yeah. I don't think that, yeah. That's not the plan, but. <laughs> Plans are made to be changed, right? Yeah, Plans are made to be changed. All right. Anything else? Jeff, are we all set? Yep. Don't see no hands up on a thing. Okay. Kyle, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Barry, thanks, thanks for coming also. Yep, no uh, Jennifer. Jennifer is newly hired at the South County Senior Center Director. Hi, we met via Zoom before. And we just, just what, last week, week before, just finalized the budget? Yes. And Jennifer is gonna to talk to us about the budget. So Jennifer, your floor. Great, do you have uh, the slides we present for? Uh, the budget? Yeah, sure. I don't know if they wanna see it versus me just going for beta. So the majority of the increase of the budget this year is due to um, not having a viable location. The increase of the budget is, um, let's wait for Dr. but um, there's a couple, two large numbers. The first one that I wanna focus on is the facilities lease agreement. Um, as you may or may not know, the services currently offered by the senior center are occurring at the Holy Family Parish um, on Sugarloaf Street in Deerfield. Um, membership has increased since we've moved to this location mm -hmm. and we are slated to be there for probably um, a minimum through the end of this year originally it was going to be the end of June however um, the wow. town of Deerfield is currently negotiating with Deerfield Academy to have uh, repairs done on the congregational church and unfortunately with the supply chain delays as well as um, you know when the supplies come in for Deerfield Academy's construction schedule there was a conflict so construction won't or renovations won't begin on the congregational church until September October time frame um, so in order to ensure that we have a viable location um, the town of Deerfield secured a lease with Holy Family Parish um, and they have been gracious to extend it through December 31st of this year. Um, so that's a $12,000 cost um, shared by the three towns. It's $1,000 a month for rent. Um, in addition, um, this was a question that came up at Deerfield's Finance Committee meeting um, about the utilities. We're still paying for the utilities at the previous location because we're still housing the majority of our items and belongings there on the first floor um, and some other locations upstairs. Um, the other increase is the outreach coordinator position was moved from the SIG grant, which may or may not be extended through the um, Office of Elder Affairs. So that moved $15,249 um, over to the operations budget. What I did was I moved the majority of extra costs over to um, a formula grant that we receive either a minimum of $6,000 per community, which Waitley and Sunderland provide the minimum of 6,000, or it's $12 per senior. Um, anyone 60 and over is what the Massachusetts Office of Elder Affairs um, deems eligible for that. The unfortunate thing is for the past 10 years, um, the number, actually 12, the numbers have been done uh, through the census from 2010, so when 2023 fiscal year occurs, we should hopefully get the numbers for uh, 2020 census. Unfortunately, that data has not been provided yet, so um, we're hoping when they go to extend it for next year that we'll have the updated numbers um, for that point. So the formula grant, or formula fund, um, which I have up here, and I'll have Jeff show you that after, will probably increase hopefully, because the number of uh, um, seniors in our community has increased. So in order to facilitate outreach amongst the seniors, that position um, is around, it's $19.55 an hour is the ballpark step that will be um, taking place for July 1. Um, and it's at 15 hours a week. 
there's no benefits provided with that position. However, it's an essential position or position that the senior center really uh, needs to have. As you've known for the past couple of years, COVID has changed a lot of uh, things within the community and the way that things are, are being done. So while, um, you know, we may, we may not always have face-to-face -face with our senior community, um, and we're trying to reduce isolation. So by providing funding for this particular position, you can guarantee that there will be outreach conducted, um, you know, on a weekly basis, virtually, or not, not just virtually, but on the telephone, on the computer for people who are able, and for those who are there in person. Um, while there is myself who works 40 hours a week, um, we do have the program coordinator, um, Ms. Corey, who's been providing support mostly for the program for the past um, seven months prior to me joining the team. Um, and it was not feasible, you know, to kind of look at continuing a type of support with her, you know, it, with only her as the part-time staff, you really do need to have two part-time persons and a full-time director. Um, there is too much to be done um, for that. So those are the two key pieces that are influencing the cost increase. If we were to take out the lease agreement, um, the $12,000, our increase of the budget would have only been approximately $5,435 for the annual um, increase, which if you look at the cost of living, cost of programming, the cost of expenditures that are continuing to go up within the economic system, um, that's really not out of, out of character. Um, I don't know if you have any particular other questions for me on this budget. I just wanted Jeff to, to take it up here. Um, and there's also the potential, um, there's a $5,100 line item for employee benefits for group insurance for my position. Right now, I don't need that, but we have to keep it in in case an emergency were to happen where I do need it, or maybe I'm not here and the next person who comes along needs that insurance. Um, so that $5,100 is staying. However, mind you, at the end of the fiscal year, if that money is still available, money monies can be moved around to go towards other program expenses if need be um, for my conversation with Deerfield's town and captain. Um, so that $5,100 could be moved to pay for part of the salary for the person um, in the outreach coordinator position. Do you have any questions I could answer at this time? Um, I did move some expenditures over from the operations budget to the formula grant, so that way we were getting the most for the operations and taking away some expenses and moving them over to uh, the grant position. So, so if I could, Jennifer, the 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 board of oversight had had a concern of of not. Not the money that goes, the salary for the outreach. We understand the outreach, the money, but what happens to the $15,249 if the grant is received? Yep. And, and the senior center is a little different than the EMS. With the EMS, we have the retained earnings that it can go to at the end of the year, the $15,249 potentially could go to the town of Deerfield's free cash. Actually, after an in-depth conversation with the town accountant, Brenda Hill, that money does not go back to free cash. It stays in that special account. Um, Jeff, I apologize. I don't remember what um, special Revenue fund? Thank you. That's what that particular fund is. So the money does not go into free cash. So um, so what we talked about is that fifteen thousand two hundred and forty nine dollars 
is that at the if the grant is received, right. not not billing the towns for that fifteen thousand because you're basic. And, and, and again, we talked about I that. And 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 again, it's 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 going back to when you present a budget, the you know you is trying to be as open about how the money comes in and money goes out as possible. And there there's so we're right now we're the outreach position is is a critical Fund, yeah and it is a critical position. It's best um, not to have it in the grant side. It, it well, it's nice to have it on the grant side, and and but we should we and again when you look at a budget, you should know what the revenue side is and the expense side, and and that that's one thing that we don't know, and we agree that you should be able you know. You, it's very difficult to hire someone if you're telling them that we don't know if your position is going to be funded exactly. or not. So, um, I, I, I just think that one, that's one of the things that we will look. The board of oversight will watch is, is if we are awarded the, the grant and if, and if it is how that that money is applied, and and the billings that goes out to the town because it is a very significant increase to the town this year. The twelve the twelve thousand dollars for rent, um, one of the things that we're probably no matter what we do with a facility, you're gonna have to start you're gonna have to start paying for a facility. So it's not a bad idea to start putting that money into In the budget. Yeah. And understand that we're gonna have to start paying. So we we didn't not, not necessarily we don't have a problem with that and, and right now the facilities are a lot better and we're getting more people yes. and the programs are being able to be offered and I think you're going to get more people coming because it is a better facility especially with it people feel more comfortable with the COVID issues and stuff so we're looking at and we we think we'll be, we'll be better off but um, and just so the board is aware I did take a lot of expenditures that normally were in the past uh, fiscal operations budget and moved them over to the formula grant. So it's not that those expenditures went away. I moved them around so I could have the position in one location. So uh, please also be aware that that money is, is something that um, Sunderland has continually paid for in the past. It's just that I moved things over to make it so one solid number was in one location for um, for that salary. So, like I mentioned, that fifteen thousand two forty nine um, really isn't a playable number. It's the twelve thousand dollars that's the increase that wasn't seen in the past because of the location and the lease agreement. Um, so while I hear the board of oversight wanting to take funds back, that money is actually really important to certain programming pieces, and it was moved around in order to. Um, have it be less of a um, less of an issue for paying that position because it's coming over from a grant perspective. Um, could you pull up the formula 291 grant for me, if you don't mind? So, and, and just so you're aware, we got a preliminary result back from the survey that was conducted by UMass. We got that this afternoon. Um, and for a breakdown, about 26% of the participants in this application uh, were from Sunderland out of a 36% um, total between the three towns um, re results. And the biggest issue was they're unaware of activities or programs available. So in here I have a mailing cost of $900 for postage because I would like to do a mass mailing at the beginning of the fiscal year, especially since we have a new viable location to attract more um, members and users. Um, so some of these expenditures were normally under the operations budget, but if you scroll up, Jeff, um, our program assistant or program coordinator, Sue Corey's position is totally funded through this particular grant. Um, so all the expenses that coordinate with her position are under here, as well as if you go below, um, the Comcast um, piece 
we'll be able to probably reduce that cost. Um, we had to wait in order to get cell phones. The reason being is we wanted to become more accessible to the customer or to our client base that we serve because unfortunately they're getting voicemail most of the time. So now we have one cell already. We're waiting for the two to be transported um, to us. So we have that um, to make it more accessible. There's also different um, pieces here to ensure conference attendance and some other pieces that were normally there. So I also dropped um, you know, some of these expenditures and moved, the, moved them from the other side to here, and some I decreased that we would normally have for the, for the amounts, um, as you can see for miscellaneous program costs and some other pieces. So um, it's a pretty, pretty straightforward budget for both pieces. This particular piece isn't voted on because this is an automatic grant uh, provided. I did have a recent phone call with Adam Frank from the Office of Elder Affairs for the State of Mass, and he said that if, if they um, move forward and give the SIG grant and make it competitive, it will be opened up to all of the entire communities within the state. I guess up until now it's only been offered and given without requirements of reporting and other pieces to 18 communities and only those 18 communities. So that's why they're looking at making it competitive where we wouldn't receive it. We'd have to compete with the other 340 communities to receive that funding. And that's the, um, the outreach coordinator position that I moved over. So. You mentioned that you've got attendance up in the yes, temporary actually, facility. Do, yeah, you, do you see an impact those. when you go back? Like any, a negative impact when you go back to attendance at all? Um, in regards to which piece? Well, just the, the numbers. In other words, the people, if your attendance is increased because they like this for the temporary facility. Yep. So our increase of attendance, so we've been at the parish location since November. Um, since the beginning, since January 1 to now, we've increased membership um, by, I want to say, sorry, I did it broken down by town, not by um, Sutherland's increased participation has been up about 17% hmm. um, with the membership that we've had. Um, we have about 16 new members since the beginning of the year. While that may not seem like a lot, it actually is uh, because we only have right now about 505 people on our roster list for members. So the increase with that particular um, has, been, has been pretty good. You know, for the majority of our population, um, Sutherland, like I said, is about 17.25. Uh, Waitley is around just under 10%. And the rest is um, Deerfield's a little over 50, 52%, and the rest are some other communities where people just come for random activities, whether it's the annual picnic or they come for the exercise program. Our exercise program through the YMCA has actually increased probably about, um, I want to say about six or seven people within the past three weeks. We had a meet and greet for when I began the position on um, March 2nd, you know, it was about a month after I started, and we received about um, seven people signed up for membership that day alone. So the big concern on this um, preliminary result of the regional community survey was 34% of the participants were unaware of the activities or programs available. So my thought is we become more visible, we connect more, we do mailings, um, we also send social, increased social media presence. Um, we're also going to be doing um, center, a kickoff for the Walk Fast Challenge. Sunderland is actually going to be the kickoff site. Uh, we were granted a $500 grant through the MCOA for that location. Um, we're going to use the Sunderland Riverside uh, Park. Um, we've already been in touch with uh, Jim and with Jeff coordinating that. And we're partnering with the with Sunderland Elementary School, as well as the other two elementary schools and our creation departments. So we're trying to do more to bring um, awareness and visibility and really uh, make an impact within the community. Um, 
That's a constant challenge. It is. No matter how many communication channels you use, there will always be people that say, well, we didn't hear about it. Or yeah. That's an ongoing challenge. Well, my goal is to reduce that and increase our visibility. And, you know, I'm more than happy to come back in six months and give you an update with numbers of attendance or anything like that. I have no problem providing that data as we you know, move forward. I'm just thinking it might be good to know like what, why the increase in attendance, you know what I mean? If there are certain things about the facility, because that might help us down the road figuring out what type of facility would be better for. The usability, yeah. the size, the size is definitely a, um, an important piece because I don't know if you've ever been to that location. I it's a no very one, yeah. large hall and it has two side rooms and it has a usable kitchen. So we provide refreshments um, in the morning we're also, one of the goals I've had is to increase the healthy options. So our cost may you know, go up a little bit for that because we're offering fresh fruit, cheese and crackers versus the sweets that are donated by Triad. Um, but they have multiple rooms. So like a bingo a little better layout. thing can go on, um, activity can go on at the same time. Socialization goes on versus um, having the exercise class um, which we actually may need a bigger space. You know, we're reconfiguring some tables if we got more participation. That's good. Um, so the YMCA classes have been the most attended events that we've had. We're continuing the partnership through the end of June. Then they're going to uh, work with us for their arthritis activity grant that they received, which will help fund the programming that we're doing and it will coincide with our, our walk mass challenge that we're doing through the end of October. Um, and then at the beginning of September, we'll pick the current exercise regiment back up, but we're also going to have the tent up again this summer. So we'll have two locations, hoping to increase programming to five days a week, not just the current three days a week. So we'll have some outdoor activities such as art classes, some birding and other things. Um, we didn't want to do any art activities in the parish hall because um, you know, with anyone, an accident could spill on the floor with paint or whatnot, and we'd like to be respectful of the space since we are just leasing it. Or be respectful in general if it was just out. So, so. so Jennifer, have you, have you thought about working with FCAT to put together a video of what you, what's offered at the Senior Center? Yes, Jonathan and I have been in touch. Um, he's going to come to film our Women's History Month event on this, uh, March 30th. Just don't let Jonathan get around the technology. <laughs> <laughs> he's not here to defend himself. You I'm shouldn't sure be saying that. Trust me, he's watching. <laughs> um, but yes, in a second. He's, he's advertising that on FCAT. We're sending him the uh, brochures and information so he can post it for, for people to see. Um, and we're also hoping that this walk mass challenge will increase participation um, with other people within each community because it's open to individuals ages five and up to sponsor, not with a financial donation, but by, say you walk a quarter mile, you go to this website, you log in and you sponsor a particular senior or name of a person and we can partner them up. And um, that puts us in the running for up to a thousand dollar grant to go towards our uh, exercise programming. Um, so. Good. Yeah. I've also recently applied for an AARP community challenge grant um, for increasing technology access to our seniors. So we're hoping um, that goes well. The deadline is tomorrow for their analysis and review. Um, I think it's a couple of months before they get back to us. So I'm exploring other avenues of, of financial you know, support, just that you know, in order to have the program be at the level it's at, this is really um, an important to ask. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> so the maintenance, I'm just a little curious about. Sure. I don't. You're not. How many hours a week is that original? You know, your normal facility actually being used. Because for I, maintenance, um, for the janitorial, we're looking at decreasing that cost because yeah. there's really not a lot of heavy traffic in mm -hmm. there. Um, and for the gas, unfortunately, during the summer or you know during the summer months, it probably will be less during the winter months um, because the items are in there, or they're being stored. 
Um, electricity will probably be less than $3,800 because we're not in there as frequently. Um, but these have been the, I guess, the projected numbers or the expenditures for the past few years. So we left them the same number in just in case, um, you know, things stay the same. Because right now, uh, Ms. Corey is currently working out of the center in her area for about two to three or two hours a day, probably maybe three hours a day, depending, I would say, two. And then our Life Path meal provider is also in this space because they have to be able to um, receive the food and then they transport it over to the parish hall to package everything up and then distribute it to our seniors to receive the meals. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're currently storing everything in the facility. Um, I'm hoping that once we get to the end of the year or you know, it can be figured out how this is gonna be paid for going forward, obviously this is a detriment to our budget to keep paying for space that we're not utilizing full time. Um, so that's something I have to figure out with, with the town of Deerfield. Um, and, you know, I can keep you apprised as we move forward on those because, you know, paying this amount of money for uh, space we're not using all the time is um, a little disconcerting, or, you know, concerning and because this money can go towards other expenditures that we have. So I'm hoping when I come back for 2024, these will not be on here. Obviously, we will be paying some kind of expense once we do move into the, into the congregational church, so I do not know what those expenses will be at that time. That church has not been utilized um, in a full-time capacity in a while, so I have no idea what the projected cost would be. Okay, finance committee, questions? Yes, Tom, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Hi, it's Linda Forte. I wanted to know, I wanted to know if you would be going to having congregate meals. Um, not at this time. We are not doing congregate meals. We may do that once we have the tent up and the weather is nicer. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We are still offering refreshments for people who do come, light refreshments, currently. Joe, did you have a question? No questions for me. Thank you. Okay, Joseph. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Jennifer. You. Okay. Insurance and smart <clears throat> insurance and smart plan discussion with treasurer collector. Heather, you got Hi. the you got the floor. So did you, did you go to UMass for uh, training? <coughs> oh, that was accountants and auditors, right. not trip. Yeah, right, right. I'm I go in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, Jeff, do you want me to introduce it? Go ahead. Go so, ahead. Yeah. Uh, there are two um, potential new benefits for employees that we wanted to uh, introduce to the select board. Um, as I think we mentioned last week about the personnel committee's recommendations, there was a recommendation to add an additional option for the HMO Blue Select Plan, which is the same plan, the same HMO plan that's currently offered to employees, um, same benefits except a slightly smaller network. It's only Massachusetts. It's only within Massachusetts. There are a couple of the more expensive hospitals. Um, uh, Mass General and Tufts. Brigham and Women's and Tufts. Thank you, um, which are not included, but. Uh, Bay State, Cooley Dick, the regional hospitals are all. Um, and it would be uh, about 13% less than the current HMO plan. 
Um, and then the second thing that um, that Heather did was look into 457 um, accounts, which are pre-tax uh, retirement, retirement savings accounts, accounts that employee municipal employees can contribute to, and it's um, analogous to the 403B plans that school employees, um, well, Heather was working on that for school employees as well to give them a lower fee, uh, 403B. And while she was doing that, I said, hey, can you do some research for us non-school municipal employees? <laughs> um, so she, she has some information and, and I don't want to steal her thunder, but I think that the, um, the smart plan that, Unless the town decided to voluntarily contribute, it would be told. You know, it would be uh, some paperwork to set it up right. in the systems. But otherwise, the employees choose how much of their paycheck they want to automatically go in there, um, and then it's the sort IRS of a limits. right. So yep. there's no aside from the time to set it up. There's no cost to the town. Um, so I did. I I just wanted to introduce those and give a broad overview, but. Um, Heather has more details, and I didn't know if you had any questions and wanted to get some feedback on um, what you thought about both of those ideas. Or Heather, I don't know if you had anything to add. Or if you guys have questions, I'm more than I'll try to answer anything you guys have. Good it's question. still we're still in the early process of it. Um, I'd like to get. So the big, the biggest question I have, Heather, is that how much extra effort is it going to make on you? Um, it's not going to be, it's, it's not going to be huge. Um, I'm a little, little apprehensive about it because um, I offered another plan to the school and hardly anybody participated in it. Um, so I, my feeling is if I go through all this, I hope we're, we're going to get more people that want to, you know, want to be in the plan. Um, that, that's something about the school because you, usually a, a teacher's paycheck is, there's a lot of money, at least when I look at the... 11% goes into the pension fund from your salary. Right. I mean, they, they go in an annuity. I mean, there's a lot of different options for them to put money, so they go in a lot of a lot of different areas. So I, I was, I'm just surprised when you said that because usually they're pretty aggressive when they're investing retirement money. Yeah. Wow. Been. Who's the service I'm, provider for this? Huh? Who's the service, but the financial service provider? Empower or financial? Empower, okay. Okay, yeah. I think yeah. they yeah. do it for, so it's, I think it's a special program that Empower <laughs> does for the state of Massachusetts that, okay. that municipal and maybe state employees can take advantage of. It can be municipal and school. And school. Okay. Yeah. And Heather, is there a, like, a, like insurance with open enrollment, is there a specific time that we have, do we have to do the smart plan? Like if we wanted to do it, offer it in fiscal year 23, would we have to set it up or can we do it in like November? As far as I know, I think we can kind of enroll when we, when we like want to. Yeah. Okay. We usually have less restrictions in medical plans. Like, cause yeah, medical I, plans, it's like a, usually a specific time of year you have to enroll. In yeah. Right, and I just, I didn't know the answer, but I wanted to raise that in case yeah, you want to yeah. yes. sit on it. I mean, I, I would, my, my concern is your workload. Right, and I've got plenty, as you know, right now. Um, uh, I've already done quite a bit of it already, so. Is it just upfront work more so than ongoing yeah. maintenance work? Yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. what'll happen is whoever does sign up for it, it'll come through, it'll come from payroll. Right, right. It'll go through payroll, so. After that, I honestly don't know exactly what my job will be at that point afterwards. So um, you're not you're not managing it, and there's no fees that are being charged back to the town. No, there's nothing to the town. There is a small fee, of course, to, to the employee, right? A certain amount, whatever you have in there, and they give you a percentage and stuff like that. But it's it's minimal. It's, yeah, um, low I number of basis points probably for it. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's a good idea. 
Um, offers people another savings option. Right, right. Um, so as far as not more workload, be a little bit, but I'm not drowning yet. Who? Yeah, because the administrator, like uh, Empower, would be the ones administering the plan. So you, as a a customer, you'd be interacting with them primarily. So, right. Yeah. Who? How is payroll administered right now? Who is the processor? How's oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so payroll right now. How yeah. is payroll processed? My guess is you're putting in the information. What company is processing? Does that make sense? What I'm asking here. Harbors. Harpers. Harpers. Would Harpers administer the deductions for um, the deferred comp plan? Yes. And do you have to be the person that processes the changes? So the changes would come from the employee, but you would potentially have to process any changes. So if I, you know, want to defer 10% this week, but next week I want to dial it back to 3%. The question is, do you process it? Yes. Okay. So I would have to input it. Um, I would like to not have to change it weekly, you know, each yeah. payroll. I mean, if somebody who says, okay, 10%, let's stick with that. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to do it, you know, if you keep changing it, that, that would be. So that, that could be time consuming on your Absolutely. part. And yeah. that's the employee's yeah. discretion and they get to make that decision. Right. And I think we could do this. If we do set it up, I think it would be nice to do like an enrollment, like we do with the health insurance and sure, stuff right. like that. If people want to change it once a year. Great. Um, another question that can lead to a lot of administrative fees is, um, it shouldn't have been, um, if there's reporting or auditing um, regulations around the plan. So usually that's driven by number of people in the plan, and I doubt that we would meet that threshold, but it's worth asking the question there. Yeah, yeah. I think Empower would be responsible for that part of it, I would think. It is, but you would have to deliver, you would have to keep good records and deliver all of the records. So for example, if I processed um, a change like in my changes. enrollment, mm -hmm. I would have to give you the form, you would have to keep, because you have to prove that you processed it within a certain amount of time and things right. like that. Right. So it, it can be administratively, Challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what I have right now for the school, um, I actually have to go in and I have to input the right. information. Right. Um, I hope that's not what this will be. Yeah. I don't believe it is. Yeah. Um, I do need to get a few more details on it to get it really um, narrowed down. But so basically, you're just bringing that to our attention right now, but you're not you're not you're not asking for. For us to vote on anything tonight or um, about offering the plan i think they would like us to for you guys to vote on it but i know you probably don't feel comfortable doing it until i get a little more solid i just want i just want to make sure that we're not that and, and again i understand there's no fees but your time is a fee right so right. If, if it all of a sudden has become an onerous undertaken mm -hmm. uh, undertaking mm -hmm. then it's we have to, we have to balance that out or find find help that makes it work. Yeah. The are in my opinion one of the weak parts that we have in in town government in, in municipal government is that our collector treasurer most our treasurer is our HR benefit person, yeah. and I don't necessarily know. So when school starts, I mean. You don't want to be the treasurer, especially because, right? I, I mean, and that because there's so many, and, and also that's another that, that's also a busy time with end of year trying to get end of year going, and you know to make yeah. so there's a lot of things that happen happen in that. So if there's just adding more, and again, not that we can't, mm -hmm. but we have to make sure that our financial team is strong enough and de and has a depth to be able to take on mm -hmm. this without overwhelming 
another person so that other jobs don't get completed. Right. I think when you look at the, the volume of how often people change their retirement contributions, it's rather small. Like people are, it's not something that people are changing every few years even sometimes, you know what I mean? So I think that volume should be pretty tiny. And then when we look at the volume of people who actually do it, it's probably not going to be very huge. I so I, I, I guess before I vote, I would need a stronger commitment from you that you're going to be able to handle okay. it. How Does that make sense, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. You guys, you guys meet again next week, right? Next yeah, week, every, every week. Yeah, unless Crystal, unless, Crystal, unless Crystal or Dave cancels it. Yeah. You don't plan to cancel, do you? Yeah, if you're not planning on it, but you know, <laughs> it could happen. How about if I do a little more um, That's research fine. on this yeah, and fine. I'll bring it back to you guys next it, week? Be, and again, we just, I, I personally, no. don't, I just don't, I, I don't want, I don't want you to be put you behind an eight ball that, that there's other, I, I, I agree that, I agree that's a great benefit to the employees. We just have to make sure that we can make it happen, mm -hmm. you know. They, when I sort of got a little bit of information, they kind of made it sound like it wasn't going to be huge amounts of work. Mm -hmm. But yeah. when you've got, but it's a sales pitch but, too, right? But maybe, yeah, well, right, right, maybe right. you can talk to your rep, the rep, the rep that's that yep. that's coming out, and ask for a town similar size of Sunderland that you can contact the treasurer collector and, and ask them what kind of additional requirements are being put to get to give you that warm fuzzy feeling. Yes. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. And and just let, can you just keep Jeff, Jeff. In the process, also. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, no problem. So the other thing is insurance. Yep. It, what are you going to talk about insurance? Um, I think Jeff pretty much said we're just we're interested in. Um, I know teachers have an interest in possibly a, a more affordable uh, health care coverage, and as Jeff said, the HMO that that Maya is offering. Um, I think it will. Uh, help out. I think it would be a good idea to do. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems, I mean, I, I'm not sure what your take is. I know that's why you're here and you'd like to yeah. say something. Yeah, go ahead. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, for anybody who's watching, I'm Jessica Corwin. I'm on the elementary school committee. Um, I've been approached by several teachers with concerns about our, our health care contributions. Um, my research of the uh, towns in Franklin and Hampshire County shows that Sunderland is second lowest out of, I think it's 43 or 44 towns in our contribution to healthcare um, because we're at 60%. Um, this HMO select plan that we're talking about offering would save 13% on premiums. And I would like to suggest, strongly recommend, that we try um, figuring out if we could afford to contribute more just to that plan. Not to all of our health care, but right now as, as a step in the right direction, see if we could contribute 65% towards this plan where we'll be saving 13%. Um, I would be very happy to personally survey all of our employees about their intentions to see if we could afford this. Are there any mechanical issues doing it to one plan versus another? That's really I'm wondering. Whitley does it now. Do they for Whitley just Whitley certain Whitley plans? Whitley does it now. I think there's 75% towards HMO and 65 for PPO. PPO. Plans, something like that. Just because of the cost difference, yeah. The, the, you know, one, one of the things last time since we, we weren't, not too long ago, we were at 50%. And we've gone, we went to 55, then we, then we went to not to, I would say in the last five years, we went from 55 to 60 percent, and my my one regret was when we did that is that the uh, I, I the board thought at the time, and I still think it was a great thing to do, but it was the uh, the deafening silence from all of the employees that didn't recognize that we had gone from 55 to 60 percent. And I, I, I personally would rather, if, if we have contract negotiations, I'd rather put it in the contract negotiation. The teachers can't do that. David and I have just been through 
no months of negotiations yeah. because the teachers from the four towns all have to negotiate their salaries together, but they each get their insurance through the town, so it can't mm -hmm. be part of those, those negotiations at all. You can have sidebars, though. Sorry? You can have a sidebar between the town and the union, and, the, and you can talk. So. Sure you can. And, and again, I would, I would, I'd, I'd like, I'd like, the, I'd like, personally, I'd like the, the employees to be a little more involved in, in that, in that, in that process. We've got one here. She's got her hand raised. She'd like to speak to it. Okay. I, 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 I'm just saying what happened the last time that we increased from 55 to 60, Jess. That's all I'm saying. Okay. We're, we're still second lowest after that increase. What's that? We're still second lowest in our contribution in our area after that. Uh, we we talk we 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 know the bo the board's been talking about it for the last three years that we haven't had anybody come and support us. Then when we we actually tried to do it this year, right, Dave? Or last year with with Scott, yeah, we, yeah. we we were talking about we talk we were talking about it all the mm -hmm. time, and we couldn't get anybody interested in it. We did, we were. Okay, the teachers have been talking to me about it. I don't know how. I, I'm sorry that didn't land well in the yeah, past. Yeah, I. I but, and and we we we've been trying we've been trying we've been trying for. You, we, I would say, for the last two or three years, we we've been talking to try to get to sixty five percent. We haven't gotten support from the town to do so. Well, in in what way? What does that mean? We haven't brought it to town meeting. I I, I would say, and and people, can, there's no one, no communication, emails or anything to the board or conversation to board members that it's a good idea. I I, I don't know. Huh? Of what board? The select board. So you're saying you haven't gotten communication? We we have we haven't we we've we've talked we've t we've been talking about it for the last two or three years, and and no one's come up and said that they and 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 talked to us about how it's a good idea that we should something that we should be striving for. Wow, they've been talking to the school committee about it, and I'm sorry we haven't done it good enough. Job of communicating that to you. Well, the, the 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 when we talk we, we talk about the entire town, not just the schools. Right. So so we wouldn't pick out one particular group to talk to specifically when when we talk about insurance. We talk about the entire town. We talk about the highways. We we talk for for us is not it, at least in my consideration is that we have many people, including at the school, that work not so much for the salary but for insurance and and we've been trying to get that for years and we've never been able to get we we we've, we've gotten people to support overrides for a lot of other things but no one's ever talked about the health care and and we we thought we thought that this has been a problem all along that's why we went up from 50 to 55 to 60. when we again when we went from 55 to 60 we the the board did that um it was a no one asked. We just thought it was the right thing to do, just like we thought it was the right thing to go to 65 percent. But we can't get. We haven't got, been able to get the town to support that number. But we haven't asked them to. We have. How? We've talked about. We've talked about it at our, at our meetings. Okay. That's, but how does that? How is that the same as asking the town? It hasn't come to town meeting. It hasn't come to an override. You're saying we've asked the town, and I'm, I'm just not understanding. I, well, obviously, and, and again, when when you talk about a budget, the budget starts the, the budget starts in November, and you, and and in for three months for three months we talk about budgets, and we talk about insurance, and we talk about other things. We we've asked we've asked the treasurer to get numbers on what it would cost to go to sixty five percent, and 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 she's right there, and, and it's not. I mean, we've we've talked about that. What what would it entail to go to sixty five percent? And and Heather has given us Heather has given us numbers and and we talk about numbers and we look at we look at how how it would affect and and to me to help help I I I'm 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 just a little confused why it it's coming now that we want 
a, a larger portion for a, a select group, why wouldn't we talk about 65% across the board? Oh, please, let's. I would love that. No, but, that, but that's not how you came. No, because I was trying to make a proposal that I thought could be approved because it, it no, could be No, 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 because we, 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 we all understand, we all understand ratcheting. And, and when you go to 65% for, and then somebody says, well, why would these, why, why is Dave getting 65% and I'm getting 60? We understand what it means. And, and, you, and, and so if, if the goal is to get everybody to 65%, which I think it should be, then, then talk about that. Don't, don't, we, we shouldn't be talking about going in, in a different method to get in there. Talk about the 65%. Do okay, we have the so latest number? But we've, we've talked, talked about we've talked about it for we talked about it for the last two or three years. Do we have the latest numbers for if just as the plans are now, like what it would? I don't like know. I don't cost. know. I don't. We we didn't. I we, we haven't asked Heather this year for sixty five percent. I can run that. Uh, if there were no changes to enrollment, yeah, just like let's assume yeah. no changes to adding plans, it be I think it's thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. So we, we've been talking about that, Jessica. Okay. And this, well, and this is something we can do. What's our restrictions around when we do something like this mechanically? So we need to sign the rate shell by April 1st. Okay. So that they can create everything and be ready for open enrollment in May. So we're kind of at the end of the line for this year. But maybe we look at next year increasing but then changing the plan offerings or something like that you know what i mean like we were talking about like maybe do a low a higher rate for hmos versus right and i mean that, do that you know the the thing that we haven't talked about is that the plans that are offered by sunderland have better benefits than other communities and so we can certainly look at Making offering a, meet, a comparable meet. plan which would save about five percent um but then people are paying more at co-pays and office right. visits and there's always a so trade there's a trade-off right. yep but yeah, yeah. um you know i think what the what the personnel committee had discussed was given the timing and, and the desire to try and offer uh an additional plan and something more more affordable adding this as an option seeing how many people sign up and then continuing to meet throughout the year and discussing how to increase the employer share and, and right. something um, we can do. Right. And and I'll tell you that my concern is people are gonna look at this and say, Oh, I could save thirteen percent and we get fifteen families on it. Um, and absorbing that cost, even a reduced cost, having fifteen new right. uh, subscribers would be significant. Um, and if we're paying a larger share as well that just makes it that much harder to, to budget That's for. why I'm offering to do a survey of the employees about their intentions to see if that would happen. And if we determined that that would happen, then we couldn't afford to go to 65% and I'll go away. Till next year, because I've been invited to push for 65 for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'd I mean, love the chance to say something, but I'm not sure if this is the right time to do that. May I interrupt for a moment? Go ahead. This is a kind of an awkward platform to use. First of all, I'll identify mm -hmm. myself. I'm Vicki Palmer, and I have had the privilege of being the Sunderland Elementary School psychologist and school counselor for almost 19 years. And most recently, I've actually been someone who has been paying for insurance, and I will personally thank you all for that contribution rate that you do provide. But just as has been pointed out, it is the lowest rate of all of the four towns. And in my experience in the school, I've heard from many employees that they are courted away by other school districts on the basis of that percentage that is provided. Sunderland has a wonderful elementary school and I can assure you Teachers are working very hard, but I also believe that all of the town employees, the firemen, the policemen, the town hall employees, all of you deserve a higher percentage rate, at least at the equivalent of what other towns might provide. 
So a, a, a raise in that from 60 to 65 percent is a wonderful, wonderful incentive for people, and it will be applauded by the school. And if you are looking for people to serve on committees to examine insurance, please let us know because we will help generate school employees to help with that process. We want to be a part of things. I think sometimes it's the awkwardness of being in different buildings and everyone being very busy. Thank you for letting me have the chance to share with you tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Katie. Um, Vic, I, and, Vic, and the only thing Vic, I will Vic, say Vic. is that you shouldn't feel awkward. We, we thought the school's been part of the town forever. I, I don't know why there'd be an awkwardness. It shouldn't be an awkwardness. Um, and and we we and, and again we we've been trying we've been trying um, I I go back many years back to when we were doing the um, negotiations with when when the, the um, support staff unionized and and when we we look at the numbers of, of that and it, is, it was obvious to all of us that they, those, a lot of those support staff are working for insurance benefits, and that's it. <coughs> they weren't making money to take home. So that, and that's how we went from 50 to 55 percent, and 55 to 60. And like I said, we've been looking at trying to go to 65 percent for the last couple couple of years. We really have. Thank um, you for doing that. And I'll oh, also yeah. mention that there are many of our support staff who can't even afford the insurance that's offered through the town because of the cost mm -hmm. differential. So yeah, no. you have some employees that are working uh, and trying their best to keep their heads above water. Yeah. And it's something that I'm well aware of, having <coughs> served in negotiations for many, many years. You know, I, 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 would, I, I, I do think it's interesting um, that, in, in like Jeff, and Heather said earlier, sometimes the benefit package may while well, you may only get sixty percent from Sunderland, your the copay and stuff um, are actually at a rate where you're actually making out and or it's equal to getting a sixty five percent in other communities. Well, I, I know. Comparison, it's you know five or ten dollars for most services. You'd have to be using an overwhelming amount of health care for that to add up to the difference. And, and but but you have to. And, and again, the the good thing is that we have an opportunity to put the numbers on on the on paper, on the computer, and and look at those and and see see how it's used. Um, and just just like sometimes, you may you may go with a different. Or, or a plan offered by a different entity for less, theoretically less money, but by the time you look at what it costs to change from one provider to another provider, it ends up costing you more, more money. So I've been working with Jeff and the personnel committee for the last few months, and we have been doing this research, and I, now I'm realizing I probably should have been bringing it to the select board all along, because you, you're not aware that we have been doing that. I've got the comparisons of the copays, of the premiums, of the networks. And I, the thing that I brought to you was asking if we could make a 65% contribution to this HMO select plan, because everything else seemed unaffordable to me for next year. This seemed like something that could be doable. I was trying to bring a feasible proposal here. All right, personnel committee thoughts? Well, I, I mean, we have copies of it where it is showing that the Sunderland plans are definitely lower copays than than you know a lot of the other plans in the area. So just saying that you know, and I agree, we're in the bottom, you know, we're the second lowest, but there are there are some benefits to having that plan, you know, versus one of these plans where you're paying a hundred dollars for 
an emergency room visit, a $50 copay for every doctor's visit. And I know it takes a lot to add up, but there are people at certain stages of life that, you know, something as simple as high blood pressure, right? And you're going to the doctors two, three times a month for blood pressure monitoring, and you're paying $50 every time you walk in versus the plans they have with a much lower copayment. You know, and same thing with a physical therapy. And again, there's people stage of life, you know, who have an injury where they need to go to physical therapy three times a week. And when you have a $50 copayment for that, that adds up really quick. Um, you know, so it's not that the plan they have is a bad plan. It's a great plan with their copayments and things like that. And, you know, I think that's why they were looking for, you know, some better options. Because for that great plan and those great co-payments, there's a cost to it. So, you know, there's, we've had, you know, they have presented paperwork showing, you know, a lot of these differences in the costs. Yes. David? Are we able to do that this year, timing wise? Do what? If we decided to do it for that one plan. We I could. I mean, my yeah. my concern is is with the budget. Right. Is that it, is it it's a big question mark. And so, you know, if people wind up, enough people wind up signing up that we haven't budgeted enough, that means probably a special town meeting um, to further appropriate funds so that we can pay our bills because open enrollment won't end till the end of May. So it's after town yeah, meeting so has taken their vote. Um, that have to be new signups, right? Not somebody changing from one. Right. Group. Changing would benefit right. the town. I think either way, um, the town would save money on changes at 60 or 65%. It's new individuals and families, um, signing up that would be uh, which again i mean I, I think had their budgets in you know one or one, a couple individuals couple, two right. families some just just to cover right but that's that based family. on historical data of how many people typically change when the plan doesn't change if there's a new plan and a different contribution rate that may encourage more participants yep uh, I see a hand up, Joseph. Yeah, thank, thank. Um, yeah, this is a tough one. Um, I hear what people are saying about the co-pays and the better plans. You know, the, the bottom line, I think, you know, a teacher, a DPW worker, a fireman. I think what they look at at the end of the day is the take-home pay, and that's what they recognize and appreciate. Uh, we, you know, being a teacher, being, you know. A DPW worker at one time, um, that's what I looked at is what am I taking home and how am I being appreciated by my employer? And so I think we have to think about that. I'm glad that the board's been looking at this for years. Um, but you're right, they do have a good program. Um, they do save money on co pays, but you don't really realize the co pay savings unless you're going a lot. Uh, then, we, then, you, then you notice you're paying a lot. Um, so I can, at the end of the day, my point is. When a teacher, fireman, or police officer looks at their paycheck, where are they taking home? Not disagree with you. I, 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 again, I don't know how we usually start this discussion. And I'm serious. I'm serious. We usually start talking about this in November. It's very, it's very difficult at this point to try to talk be, because usually, usually what in the past years when we talked to the treasurer collector, we, we start with a question and and the, we'll get numbers and then we'll ask another th one question generates three questions that generates five questions and, and it usually takes a while before we're at a comfortable position to, to make a recommendation. So I, I think it'd be hard in, in what was just said about the um, Take home pay. I don't think it doesn't matter if you're a teacher or an engineer. Most people look at the take home pay. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. 
I look at my take home pay. Yeah, at least, at least those of us who don't have enough. And you know, know, yeah, the only one that probably don't are accountants and well, people who make enough money. Yeah, they're, they're, about it, but. I'm offended. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those fiduciary people, you know, they, they probably look at something that the different, but. I, and, and again, Jess, I, Jessica, I don't. I have n absolutely no problem to start this process in in the summer and and come together for next year's. Town meeting. And with a whole, the whole litany of, in my opinion, a whole, and, and again, to talk about the whole thing. Maybe, maybe we can offer 65%, and we would go back to, you know, go back to the plans that are offered in the other time, where they follow their co-pays and everything else. And you know, and, and I, I don't have a problem with that. We got a hand up again. I do. Yeah, I just was agreeing with you. You know, that you know, we do look at the take-home pay. I think you. I agree. Like. It's too late probably to put this into the budget, yeah. but if we can look at that other plan that Jess is talking about, the th and Heather's looked into, and I know Heather's done a ton of work in the last five weeks on this. Um, you know, maybe we can do one. You know, one step would be the, the the other alternative there. Thank you. Yeah, I I'm, I'm just saying I, I definitely would recommend trying to implement this other option for the HMO if we can for this year and then take a look at the percentage for next year but yeah i i, I oh I, I agree with you no i i agree that i i think and and again i sometimes too many options is 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 troublesome but i don't i mean what would our offer three this would be a right. third option yeah, well, yeah. i don't that think that's yet. troublesome no. No. but it also how <clears throat> on it'll in a would introduce it to our employees mm -hmm. so they get an opportunity to take take a look at it and like David was saying and and Crystal you know people at different times of their life would want different you know <coughs> different plans right. you know so I, I think that's a good 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 opportunity to bring in a different plan maybe nobody take it maybe a, a lot of people take it. I don't know well do we have time to do like a survey or anything on it no well, why would you need to know about Yes, I mean, I'm volunteering to do it the, myself. It wouldn't fall to the town employees to do the work of it. We'd have to employ. We'd have to hit all the town employees, though. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, we got five weeks to town meeting day. Or we need to sign it next week. We have to sign it next week. Yeah, to we get have to, the, the, the show. Point. We have to you can sign that without knowing what our contribution is, can't you? Isn't that something we figure out internally? We're all agreeing we should have the select yes. plan, so you can sign that. My only fear, my, I shouldn't say fear, but if we do bring this plan up and we do offer it, um, I think it makes everybody nervous about you know, how many people are actually going to take it. And well, that's the unknown. Is, right. So I, is, I guess I'm thinking if, if it takes off and a lot of people want it, are we prepared to have a special town meeting if we don't have enough in the budget? Well, that's what we'd have to... That's, That's the risk, I guess, is right. if we implement the plan and we get a bunch of people on there, right. Right. no matter what we're paying, which is a right. totally separate topic. Right. Um, I mean, I think it's a good idea. I'm not, you know, that's why we looked into it. I think it's a yeah. good idea, but. Yeah. And then that puts, potentially puts a lower cost plan in for a year. We see what the potential changes are. And then for next year, start talking about the, start percentage. Talking about the percentage because then we'll have a better, I, you know, and again, changing the percentage can also change your enrollment. You know, if I have a health plan that I'm paying, you know, that's a 50 50, oh, and then my husband gets a new job and right. he's at a 75 25, well, I'm dumping mine and hopping on his. So changing that percentage has. Again, potential for increasing enrollment, but that's something we always go into a blindly every year. Exactly. You never know what, exactly. What's going to happen? That's always a, and which is why you get the two padded there every year because it's an unknown. Yeah. Hmm. Can I? I think 
there are just two points that I want to make. One is right now with with the low copays and the low out of pocket, the the plan is really to help people who need it, right? right? Um, and if if our goal is to pay the largest percentage, I can go to Maya and say max out all the copays, the max out of pocket. And I understand that's not what you're saying, and I'm not I'm not. But I'm saying if that's really the driver, then we can certainly increase that a lot, and we might be able to get up to seventy or seventy five percent. Be but, but on the backs of the people who are sick and actually need the health insurance, right. and and so I think that that's the trade off. Because I, Joe, I agree with you. Yeah, people look at their bottom, but they also curse the people that give them the insurance when they need it and they're right. paying out of pocket. And so it's finding that that's balance how, how of right, benefits that's, and costs. Right, because if you only look at one side of the equation, that's like us looking only at expenses in our budget and not taking into account revenues. You have to look at what comes in and then, right. And, and that's, that's the challenge with medical is everybody is in a different situation and it's a very personal decision based on a whole host of factors whole that we have no control over. And you know, you That's just don't want to put somebody in a bad position where one illness, one, you know, broken bone where you have to go to physical therapy for wow, three right. months. And we're kind of shackled by the lovely medical system. That and we you're have, paying so. out eighteen hundred dollars in co pays yep. for physical therapy, which is not unheard of. Oh, no. At fifty dollars a session, three times a week for three months, and you saved on your 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 you know monthly contribution, but now you've just paid out eighteen hundred dollars for this one simple ailment. Right. Did and you save anything at the end of the day? Well, and to just point, we have to look at the balance of it. Right, and Not, that's right. You can't look heavily at one end because there's a cost. Yeah, and you'll pay it. Believe me. Just one more, and it mm. has, obviously has something to do with this, but um, Maya also offers this smart shopper. Anybody know anything about that? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, is, that, is that like a tool to help people? So, yeah, so I mean, if, if you have to go for an MRI or something like that, you yep. can you know, get online, find out, you know, because not all facilities um, charge the same. Yep, that is and very true. If you true. do that, then they actually, if you save, then they actually do give you a check in return. So that's something to think about if somebody wants to do the, the footwork. That's the, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're, I haven't used it, but I mean, I've heard other people have used it and they actually, you know, they come through with it. You put a claim in like that and they do. They follow through with it. So that's another tool. It's an online tool that's very easy to use. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're looking at putting the new plan in, right? That's yeah. the new option. So do you want to vote on us to put the new plan in? Uh, I would say by next meeting if you don't if you want to think about what you heard and I can put it on the agenda again or but yes I, mean, I, I think if we're going to do it I mean there's well, going to be a we, risk we, whether we do it now or late you know what I mean that's we do it this week or next know. week right it's, so I mean I, I'm comfortable taking a vote to include it now I mean we it's an unknown we're going to have to step into it to find out so, make a motion I make a motion to add the plan uh, the new HMO option I second it. The plan. Okay. We have a motion made and seconded. Mm. Further okay. discussion. Oh. Can, can I just add a clarification yes. of the employer contribution on the new plan? Since Same. that was a topic of discussion. I just want to make sure. That was a question from the audience. That wasn't a topic of, that wasn't this board. Okay. Because I see that as a separate thing. I, I that, was a, that was a public comment. Okay. That we... We had a recommendation. Anyway, so we have a motion made and seconded. Discussion. I think we've discussed it. And in my opinion, and again, I, I said I don't know why we would have certain people at sixty-five percent and certain people at sixty. All, I believe all all employees are important. I hope that next year we go to sixty-five percent. Right, or maybe we look at that. We look What's that? At, or you know, or maybe we look at you know, depending on that you offer more for HMOs or you know. Well, I, I, I would just, I, I think that, and, and again, we go if, if we're going to review our past past discussions.
that 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 those discussions about um, back when we went from fifty to fifty five percent, and when we went with with Maya versus Hampshire Collaborative, and all of that, we we those were part that was part of the discussion. Those 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 were very serious discussions about um, co-pays and 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 trying to maintain affordable co-pays because it was important that it, it's affordable for the people to have insurance of course but also it's affordable to people that have to use insurance as well and and we valued we valued both both segments of our of our employees so that so we try to we, we've been trying to balance and, and just right it's be really kind of really easy to to get a 75 or 70 75 percent but you build everything up so that you're looking at a hundred dollar copay every time you go for physical so and that's that's what we've been trying to do is balance that out for a long time I, probably before heather i mean yeah. so may i respond to a comment you just made What's that? May I respond to a comment you just made, not understanding why we would pay two different rates for different Huge. employees? Absolutely. As, as a way to say to the employees, we hear you, that you feel like you're paying too much for health insurance. We can offer this lower cost plan. And because we do want to support you, we value you as employees. We know no, that I you stepped up in quote, the pandemic. I, I do, yes. probably more so than you understand, value every single one of our employees including the people on the lower scale yes. and, and that's not a question yes. so so when you phrase it the way you did i take offense to that jessica i really do because I, I i value all of our employees not just a school yep. all of them i do too and i apologize accept it as we've been saying employees know what their take-home pay looks like and this is a way for us to show our appreciation for them in their take-home pay. Okay, any any uh, additional conversation, discussion? Okay, here no other um, finance committee? Okay, at this time we'll have a vote. All those in favor of offering the, what's your official title? HMO Blue Select. At 60%, which is, Signify by saying aye. Aye. At 60? Yeah. The rates that we do right now. Aye. And then once we see, then we look. Yes. B0. Now, Heather, mm -hmm. can you please start, when you have an opportunity, start putting numbers together that we can start looking about going to 65 and and look at what other towns are play, paying for um co-pays and other insurance you, you know I, the, the i think plan. a lot of that you already have right Heather? yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that we, can, we can start reviewing that we gotta wait yeah, till like the only towns that's may right. have a higher percentage but they're paying it'll be updated then yeah but I, right it's a balancing act there's no doubt it's yeah, yeah I, I, and, and that's we understand that and, and insurance is a is a tough is a tough is a tough thing to discuss it's a personal thing it's a personal choice I personally I don't know why someone would choose this plan but like Jeff told me he said well it it's something that we should do for to try to get as many people on the program as possible and he's right we should we should try we should try I agree and once our enrollment period ends, we'll have an idea of how many people are in what plans. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. We, and, and, and again, we, we've said this, for, I, and again, I just, I look at the numbers. I, I look at how many people take it, who went, and I, you know, and I remember at Frontier conversation, at Frontier, how we offer people, do we still offer people like $1,000 or $1,200 to not be in the plan? I don't think we do that. Frontier, did you, did you negotiate? Start was that part of the negotiation? I don't believe we talked about that piece of it. I mean, so try to eliminate that's part of the plan, and that doesn't make any sense to me contract. either. So I don't right. even know the companies are doing that anymore. There was a, it was a no. It's for gone the other time. way. Yeah, where they they charge you. All right, 
yeah. additional money if your spouse is eligible right. and right. doesn't right. take their insurance. Exactly. Yeah. They kind of flip flop. They charge right. more. Yes. Essentially, yeah. if my spouse is eligible yeah. and I'm on a fam a one in one plan, yeah. you get charged extra because he should be on his plan and I should be on my plan. And your employer should be paid. Yes, I pay because my husband's eligible for other so, insurance. So I we, pay to keep him on my Blue Cross and Blue Shield. So do we we every other, employee is trying we, to get the costs off to another. We have employee. a family exactly plan, right? right? So yeah. and we offer a one plus one plan. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And we offer a single plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we don't tell people what they have to take, what plan they have to take. No. It's their choice. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And, and I know places that just will give people money for plans. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a very interesting... I've heard of that. Yeah, it's essentially... It's, yeah. I saw it more common about five, ten years ago. Yeah. People are stuck. trying to push you off onto your spouse's plan. Yep. Family we, plans are expensive. Family plans. Having yeah. babies are expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we talked about that. It was like I it was like six, seven, eight maybe years ago when insurance prices yes. were going that's, yeah. before yeah, Obamacare. That frame, yeah, well. yeah before but that's Obama. when they started, but they didn't drop that. No, they continued it. They continued it. Um yeah, it was about that time frame was the big push. So. I remember that now. You're right. Wow. All right. Let's talk about budget review, FY 23. How you want to do that? Finance committee, what do you think? I know. Uh, you have a hand. Like so Jeff, are you good with me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did he have a question or? He did have his hand up, but now he just jumped. Yeah, no, it was just a side comment. When you guys were talking about insurance plans, my, like my school, they give us a stipend against our deductible. So our deductible is 3000 but they give us a 2200 um, account to take to reduce the deductible. But I'm not suggesting we would do that in the town. It doesn't work out very well. I, I mean, it's a way to offset, like to bump onto a high deductible plan. You have lower premiums. But then it's more out of pocket. But then right. offer an HSA plan, yeah. where at least you can get, you know, theoretically a That's twenty to thirty yeah. percent discount if you if you have to use the deductible. That's something we ought to look at uh, is getting something like an HSA in ours because yeah, that, a high deductible a really plan with an HSA. Thing. Because yeah. if you don't think that you will utilize your insurance, it then may be better to pay less in premiums yep. but have the safety net of an HSA plan, which and. I don't know all the legality of it, but essentially an HSA plan, one, you get the tax benefit, and also it, yep. it, um, it rolls over year to year. So unlike the FSA plans, which if you don't use, it's gone forever, and so there's right. this, down, you know, this balancing act, HSA plans, it doesn't go unused. So if I put $1,000 in it, I don't use it, I'll have an additional $1,000 next year. Right. That's kind of yeah. gives you a little bit better safety net. Um, but Maya should help you out with that. I'm assuming Maya is your administrator. They should be able to go through and say, here are the potentials and here's the right mix. I think we need to sit down and, and initiate that conversation. That's why. And then the say. other thing is, and I'm sorry, I'm, oh, I have yeah, some experience okay. choosing, oh, it's fine. It's <laughs> choosing fine. medical plans. Um, I would be curious to what degree of detail does, does Maya actually go out into our school and talk to so that, that was one of the things the that plan. they asked was if they're going to be adding this new plan, yeah. will someone What's the education? That's huge. come out and, and help them talk. understand FSA, HSA. This is complicated stuff and understand what your benefit is and what does it really mean. I mean, I think that's a huge component too. And, and that's always, that's always. Been our concern because we, we have talked about HR, right. and and it, it is hard. And and the tr and is the treasurer have the necessary resources that mm -hmm. that that position can talk? Because when you hire the treasurer collector, you're looking at every everything but explaining benefits, right? right? Yeah. And and but to our employees that 
if you have an HR question, who do you, who do we send them to? We send them to the treasurer, right? Or me? Yeah. Or yeah, and 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 people that may not be. It's not their primary. It's not their primary. Job. Yeah. It can easily an entire, suck up. Yeah. Fifty percent of their time in any given week, though. Yep. HR oh, yeah. questions because are people difficult. people yeah. ask you know yeah. people ask very pointed questions. Yeah. And I'm and and when you look and I'm, it's true about when you look at a, a teacher's pay stub between the MTA with a lot of the programs that they offer mm -hmm. and, and 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 they're trying to maximize you know they're. And, and they're very, and many are very informed investors, and 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 they understand about their investments and and their annuities and, and the, the whole the whole litany of things. So, it, it's it's usually not. Oh yeah, we're going to contribute ten percent to four hundred one, and that's the extent of it. You know. So, so you want to start? Or did you want to talk about revenue, Jeff? You want to start with revenue? As much as is available, sure. <laughs> um, we submitted for free cash again on Friday. Um, there's a big powwow here. We got um, our, our accountant, uh, a couple accountants, and then some, some outside help. They thought they got it. All set. We had one question from DOR. Uh, the accounts were able to respond to it this morning, and we're hoping that DOR will get back to us and say everything's all set, but that has not happened yet. So, um, still working on that. But the other question on revenue, and I, do you want me to just talk through each of the numbers or just highlight specific things in the spreadsheet? What, what's finance committee or, or I mean you, you haven't really talked about revenue yet have you did you want you want to just kind of review it an overview sure so um, the tax levy is um, generally up it's uh, two and a half percent over last year new growth was lower because um, North 116 flats was fully accounted for in fiscal year 22. So that's no longer new growth. Um, and then the capital override was voted. Um, cherry sheet estimates, all we have so far are the governor's um, H2 budget. Uh, I know the MMA is advocating to the legislature to increase uh, unrestricted general has the, House, has the House and Senate come out with their bills? Have they come out with mm -hmm. their budgets? No. no. So we're like, you know, really? as usual, just waiting. For what? Christmas is in December. <laughs> Got me. So can, can, can we, Jeff, can we write a note to, to our state rep and state senator and say we kind of important to have a budget from them also we certainly can okay i i just i, I don't quite understand i mean there, there 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 used to be a there used to be a flow to like there, everything else did, that's gotten backed up you know there used to be a flow to kind you there they put out cadence. eight that you you put out h1 and yep. then the, the, you know the governor's budget, and then it short followed by a month with the House, and then by a month you had the Senate. They hammer it out in committee, right? And it, then then we then we start haggling, not us, but that they do in closed session because they don't have to, they don't have to do open sessions in the legislature because they talk about big important stuff that the public doesn't have a right to know. That the public exactly. doesn't have a right to listen to. Um, like that. Pretty good how we got that shot in there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, so we have the only heard by this room, though, basically, right? I know that um, makes me feel better. Four though. people on and the one the of people yeah. on the yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah. It's the highest rated show on Monday night, you know, on cable access. All right, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. Um, so, a advocating for increases in in uh, 
Chapter seventy education and but you're not look you're you're just you're just putting I'm just putting with the governor's you're putting the governor's out, numbers because that's the numbers that's our proposal yep um, so I see they did, they didn't like my education plan because it they not for this year okay I think it's under consideration Good. Yeah. consideration uh, or discussion do you have any feel for the change between the governor's budget house and senate or is it all over the place year to year. You know, does it always go down? Does it always go up? Do oh, you have no, any usually sense? goes up. Usually yeah. goes up yeah. a little bit more. They they like to put a little bit more in um, education. Usually, a little bit. That always good. Well, it does. It, it, it and and I it, it, they and they usually put a little bit in local, the local re receipts. And then they usually up our assessments and charges by yeah. at least an yeah. equal amount. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So. So uh, so it kind of washes out. All right, I was going to say. So we kind of <laughs> in, in, just, in, just move it around. We, we have all, we have always used the we've always used the governor's numbers, and it, and it's proven over time to be beneficial to us because yeah. like if because thing, if things go up, it's it's just that's where we generate some of our free cash. Yeah, we try to stay conservative on that. Right. Yeah. Just so we don't get because you. Usually, there's not a massive difference unless you're in really tough economic times. So even then, it it, yeah, it depends. It really depends on on if it's an election year and if the uh, the speaker of the house or the president of the senate's running for governor, which they're not. So yeah, we should, it it, it, it probably would be pretty close. Okay. Um. So the, the next biggest line is uh, local receipts, and that's one of the th things we're still working on. Um, one of the questions that we want to get answered is, we are in the unique situation of being a Franklin County town, part of the PVTA network that is operated by the University of Massachusetts. So... Who's retiring? Nobody's retiring. Glenn's retiring. Oh, is he? Mm-hmm. You know Glenn, don't you? Uh, through talking about this agreement, um, and I think he's a member of the Campus and Community Coalition mm -hmm. um, as well. So, not well, but professionally. Um, so, the, the question that we're trying to get clarity on is we have an agreement with UMass that says any regional transit assessment that the town gets, UMass will pay for, and we agree to go for any federal or state grants for transportation that would help it offset costs and things like that. Does that satisfy DOR to say, hey, we're gonna put 100% of our local receipts for transportation to match whatever our assessment, assessment. is, so it's basic because we know it's going to be paid for. And if the assessment goes down, then we're going to get a smaller check. It still washes out. Yeah. Um, but my understanding is DOR wants those numbers to be conservative because they don't want us to be operating in a deficit. Um, so we are waiting to see if that can happen. If it can, then our local receipts can go up about 39000 And if you look at the bottom right now, we need about thirty seven. So would nice. that would be that would be the easiest solution, I think, um, assuming that they allow us to do that. That being said, part of the conversation with the accountants and the I thought we did have an agreement with the university about that. We do, and it goes back a long time. It is a it's an annual agreement that we renew each right. year. Right, yep. but it, but it's been in place for when the buses first came. Yeah, remember when the buses first came? Those little buses. They, they, they were like a bread truck, or not really a bread truck, but they were, yeah, they were. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like yellow, a banana, not a banana yellow, but a, a cream yellow with a red stripe, and yeah, they're small. Okay. They have full, you have full uh, electric buses now. So, all right. No place to plug them in, though, here. The, uh, yeah, there is. They're, they're, Inside they're, 
they're building they're building infrastructure at the uh, PBTA garage right now on campus. I said no place to plug them in here in Sunderland. Oh, we're not in Sunderland, no. So, so your six your six seventy four for local receipts, that's with the thirty seven thousand or without it. That is without it. Without it, yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, so you're thinking you're going to go to almost seventy seven hundred thousand? Uh, yes, if if they allow us to. Yeah, I think right now we had. I that I feel that's that's kind of high. It is kind of high. I mean, I, I think that this is this is eighty percent of the last the average of the last five years and adjusting for specifically uh, <coughs> building permits because of the significant um, permits for North 116 flats and uh, 120 North Main. Mm -hmm. So we asked them to account for that. Um, but yeah, you know, we, I think the estimated receipt for for it's miscellaneous, um, which is w what we put that uh, revenue in, was 120,000, and the regional transit assessment was 159,000. So, and I will say it went up from 122 to 159. So that I mean that's it's kind of the increase. So. So we've been kind of increase. We've been in kind of increasing local receipts like by like one and a one to one and a half percent a year. And this year you'd go from six sixty two to seven hundred about. So you'd be looking at going to like two percent, two and a half. Well, if you go further back, it was actually closer to nine point seven percent, eighteen to nineteen. Oh really? Six point seven percent, nineteen to twenty. We dropped down five percent, obviously twenty one, one percent increase. This, if you increase another thirty eight, which you mentioned, would bring a seven percent increase. I have the benefit of a spreadsheet to do that quick math. <laughs> Amazing. Not an <laughs> well, I, I and, and I, I, I just, I don't. So I, that that may be a little high, Jeff. I, and we, I think. I mean, I, I. To your point earlier, I think that the estimated local receipts are probably the primary generator of free cash. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so it's a matter of do we spend the money now and then we don't have it later? <laughs> or, right? I mean, and I don't disagree with you. I think it, it, it was. I, I just, I just, you know, I, I mean, it's a board prerogative. But I, or, or the financing, I, you guys, I, I'd feel better. I, I just rather, it, it looks like we're going to have enough free cash. Um, we haven't got to that not topic yet. Within, <laughs> not within keeping with our policy of not spending more than 30% of free cash on the operating budget. We may not. Well, I, it depends on what we do on the expense side, right? So, Absolutely. yes. That, that that is. So can, can I, I? I guess we don't have to. We don't have. I, I don't know about the finance me, but personally, I think going to seven, a little over seven hundred thousand, would be a lot on that. Um, so I'd like to look at that. Okay. So. You, you know, I guess that. I, you said seven percent. It would be seven percent. Yeah. So like I said, pre-pandemic, it was like nine seven percent increases. COVID dropped down 5% and then we had a 1% increase. Yeah. Bringing it to seven even is about a 5.5% increase. What percentage of that is from excise, auto excise? Because that's one of the factors because there's been obviously the a lot majority, of less majority, I want to say it's like that's what I thought. of yeah. the 600,000. So there's your, there's your reason. I thought the accountants thought that we did have an excess in that account. Okay, but I don't think it can't be that long because we, if you go back to just before you got here, we were we were re taking that. I believe we were 
refunding it every year to the town. The assessors say they didn't need it, and we would. We did have something in place to do that. Not use it in the budget, but like roll it into free cash or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, so, so yeah, check. Okay. You, I, 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 oh. I don't think there may because at one time we had like two hundred. There was like two hundred thousand dollars or something in it. It hadn't yes. been done for a long time, so. Yeah. Yep. So we'll look into that. Um, continue. Fundering OPEB uh, yeah. liabilities, um, that and that, that's pretty much it for the revenue side. Um, and then the capital override expended, we're meeting tomorrow night to talk about the capital, capital. budget. Yeah. Um, so I, I do need to, Joe, you have a question? Yeah, sure, Jeff. I don't want to interrupt, but I, I don't want to miss it. Uh, line 32 there, capital, I see there's a big dip, and there's a blue note there. It jumps from 119 in the red to 171 in the red. I'm sure the blue note explains it, but what happened there? You just say uh, estimated based on amount available is your comment in that cell. Uh, 117? I'm not. Goes from 118. Oh, you mean from fiscal year 22 to 23? Yeah. So that, yeah, so in my experience since I've been here, uh, the capital committee has fully expended the capital stabilization and which increases two and a half percent each year. So basically I just, yeah, I, if you'll see the second lot, it's not number two, but the, the second line under tax levy raised and appropriated is the capital override and those will match. Yeah. Um, at least for now, if the capital budget isn't the full amount and we're saving some, I still think I actually need to do this here <laughs> and, yeah. and wash it. Um, yeah. But I did want to check yeah. that before I do. Um, so yeah, that does that answer your question, Joe? Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Joe. Yep. Um, so uh, we talked a little bit about state assessments and cherry sheet offsets, which are, hey, we're giving you this money and we're charging you this money. Um, and as you'll see, the, the big increase in the state assessments, well, one of them was the additional $40,000 um, for the, or almost $40,000 for, for the regional transit. So um, that's why you see that one jumping up. Um, and that that puts our, our revenue about thirty seven thousand dollars behind the um, requested expenses. So moving on to the expense side, which is a lot longer and um, not going to go through it in detail. And let, but if you want me to give like the bottom lines of each department or something, I can do that. But I think. It, it would be helpful to talk about I did make some changes um, and wanted to call them out specifically or there were changes made since last week I think last week the the um, deficit was about a hundred and seven thousand or hundred and nine thousand um, and so how we got to 37 was um, South County EMS adjusted their budget down, which was a savings of about 37000 for Sunderland. So you want me to explain how that happened? Please. So, so, so when we looked at the budget increase of South County to the three towns, approximately 30%. So when we looked at the budget last, last week, there, we have a goal of replacing the AMP in ambulance every four to five years. So we approximately need about, we need about $350,000, give or take, depends on, on what ambulance comes in at. To do so, we're looking at $65,000 $65, a year that we needed to be put aside. They, we've been carrying an approximate number around $100,000 as a just in case fund that's been at the end of the year has been rolling into the uh, revenue reserve fund. When we look at what we collect from the ambulance fees, 
typically we've been looking at recovering about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars plus a year we've been budgeting in the revenue side we've been budgeting five hundred and seventy five thousand so the difference between 575 and the 650 is at 65 plus thousand. Mm -hmm. So we felt now that we have enough experience, we were not going to see a hundred thousand dollar reason, and we have conservative with our budgeting. So we set the number of revenue at 575 with the anticipation of 650. The difference between the 575 and the 650. That would be rolled into our uh, ambulance reserve fund. So that's how we were able to reduce the budget by a hundred thousand dollars. We and, and again we have COVID. COVID stretched it, but we learned it. We we could what we weathered the storm through COVID. So we're in, we're in good we're in good shape. That's great. So that's why that's why we're reducing it by a hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. Um, uh, um, for the the town expenses, um, I tried to. I don't know if that's legible to anybody, but I um, I, I tried to look at things that we would be able to that <laughs> wouldn't hurt as much, and so we were able to save about thirty five thousand by level funding the snow and ice wage and expense lines uh, there was a two thousand dollar increase obviously material costs money um, overtime costs more money but we can deficit spend those accounts yeah. so that that's kind of an easier way where place to cut um, the police department expense uh, they requested a, about a three thousand dollar increase again Cost of goods and services is going up, totally reasonable. We happen to be fortunate that there are ARPA funds and one of the things that we prioritize is public safety. And so I think that if there, if there's a need for that additional $3,000, um, I, I would imagine that ARPA could be used for that. Um, the There was about 7,000, this is, by the way, any feedback from Finance Committee Select Board on any of these, greatly appreciated. Um, so so on, in the police department. Yes. In the police department, there's a increase of $60,415 under full-time officer wages. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that's the addition of a new full-time officer. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have do? So it looks like the chief is reducing part-time wages by a little bit sixty two hundred dollars yes. also part-time police wages or excuse me part-time police wages are down sixty two hundred police department overtime is twenty seven hundred dollars so that's not that's not offsetting the but is there any conversation about that officer okay I just wanted to I just wanted to throw that out there um, so we were right, Joe you got a question oh, sorry no no question I understand okay thank you um, Go ahead. I'm just gonna put Joe's hand down so he can raise it again if he does you know, hand used. Oh, sorry about that. No, not a problem. Um, so the other, let's see if I can find it. Um, the other areas that I reduced, um, we saved about seven thousand one hundred dollars by level funding, property insurance, workers' compensation, and. Uh, veterans benefits estimates um, we the original budget I just stuck in a 5% increase thinking that's kind of where inflation is at um, but we haven't gotten um, uh, proposals or, or 
uh, estimates for what it, any either of those three things would cost. So, so can 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 I go back to town inspectors? Sure. Uh, so I, that was my next thing. Yep. Okay, that's your next one. Yep. All right, go ahead, Dave. Well, I was just gonna say I I um, looked at the total expense budget and there was about. $3,200 worth of professional development between code books and uh, associations, et cetera, that could be absorbed in the existing line item for professional development. Mm -hmm. So I moved uh, 3,200 to that line. So in, 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 in the budget, it looks like an increase of $7,000 under building in, inspector expense. Are you saying that should be reduced? That twenty-two hundred dollars, I think, increase was the code books, right? So, it, it's really the driver behind that is the, um, and I can't figure out where the zoom is. Down in the corner. Down here somewhere. Oh, the animal inspector. Never mind. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I don't. So, view. I tried that. I all right. I'll I'll just come closer. Sorry, Sorry if I'm blocking. Um, and then I moved it. Um, Trying to look at my note. So. Travel, phone, office supplies, and then the big one is the permitting software, which is 4000 a year. Is the what? The permitting software. So I think last year, what um, with COVID, I think what the building inspector did was cut out a lot of uh, the, the travel expenses um, and mm -hmm. trainings that weren't being offered necessarily in person. So that's why... I think it was 4000 for the permitting software and then just 800 in other expenses and that's why it was yeah. bumped Lower up so much yeah. this year. Yeah. We're back to normal. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, uh, because yeah, cuz the the books are one time won't won't be needed again for 6 years. Right. Yeah. Or so. Right. Yep, yeah, cuz that's when the International building. IBC. Yes. <laughs> Learning about it, yeah. But that, but they, but they do it every for three or six years. So they they usually don't do major rewrites every. They usually do it like I thought six years. So. Right. So we shouldn't have to. So the code book is sixteen. So you're gonna. So if you have the money available now in in professional, professional development. development, you can he can just take it out of now. Right. That is a good question. I will double check that we but have. We didn't, we didn't go to. We didn't go to. They did haven't didn't have the conference in Boston. So. Um, that's a great suggestion. I'll see what uh, what else we might be able to. You know, can we register for the trainings that they plan on doing this right. year? And, and, and again, and in, in my my and, and the only reason I say that well. I go back to trying to, if, if it's a one-time expense, I, I hate to put the, a one-time expense into the budget. Right. So code books are not, it's not a, a yearly update. Right. So, or 1600 or whatever the expenditure is. So it's like a one, it's a one-time, then you wait three or six years, it comes back again. So It's kind of like buying a police cruiser. It's kind, huh? of, it's kind of on the same time frame as a police cruiser, you know? Almost the about, same date. Yeah, like six but, years or so. But so, and, and again, it's just, it's just the way it shows up on budget. You know, you look at it and it's a forty percent increase. It's like, well, building why is it? And 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 I I what I would talk about the building inspector also is that it's a nine point two percent increase in his salary, but it's funded by the fees that are being paid. Right. Because that has so, its own revenue. So there's, a, there's, an off, there's, there's revenue offset on that. Correct. Okay. Yep. 
it, and I, I guess you could also <clears throat> pay the fees and pay for everything is expensive also. But. But, uh, we could ne set up next, a revolving next. fund. Ma can, can you make you yourself up? <laughs> in there? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. The, 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 <clears throat> the accountants are going to shoot you if you talk about revolving funds. But but talk about that. Let's, let's talk about that next year. Okay. Okay. About using... Yeah, I'll, I'll figure out how we can do it because I think right yeah. now the fees go into the general fund. They do. Um, so, yep. Okay. So uh, I guess a question is how. Well, I, I'll I'll finish my last yeah. um, thing, which is I, based on the discussion last week with the schools that they thought there was only one student going to right. Smith. Smith. I reduced the out of district tuition and transportation from two students to one. So I think that that was about eighteen thousand two hundred, um, and then not building in a percentage increase for property insurance, workers' comp, and veteran benefits. Um, I wanted to get some feedback on because both of those made me a little nervous to do. Yeah, I I I, I think. It, it's interesting, and, and I and I, I know one of our local communities seeing a significant increase in their in their student population going to the tech school. So they're they're ending up with it's like seventeen thousand dollars plus per student, and they're like twenty additional students. There's a sig and and I I don't. And not that it's hap not that it hap it, it has never happened to that extent to us, but we've had like three or four more go, and that's I mean that's and that that's a possibility. Yep. I don't know, and that's that's a tough one to handle. Yeah, because we don't we don't actually know until October. You don't know. We have to October. budget in April, right. and we don't know the answer until October. So it's a tough one. Yep. Okay. Um, so that that's that's how we got to the thirty-seven thousand that we still need to figure out how to how to close. It's better than the last version of one hundred and eight. So yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the majority of the credit goes to. Uh, the Board of Oversight for South County EMS, um, on, on reducing that, but yeah. uh, I, you know, I think there, there's, we can still certainly get there, um, and I think we are in a much better place. But, and, and, and you know, I, I, just, I just want to talk a, real quick one more time about the insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, going from 60, 65 percent. Why, why is it, why, why it's so? And what we've always tried is talk about it earlier in the thing, because then we can we can talk to our department heads, and and like the chief the chief wouldn't be putting in for for a new full time employee, in, in, and and that that's why it has you know we have we we have to talk. It's a long, it is actually a long process. The budget the budget process really occurs all year long. So we should really start. We if if we are ser I hope we are serious because I think it's it's something that we should have been doing for a long time. And and I I'm I'm, I'm not going to speak for Scott Bergeron, I but I know it was a, a concern of Scott's also because we we talked about this so many times and and, I, and David's not David and uh, I mean it's been a concern of David's also. We we on on this board we talked we we talked about it and it has been a concern and. And, and, and we've talked about it at personnel committee too. Right. I, I, I mean it, it but we really need to start that conversation in in actually before September, you know. And 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 Heather Start has to be start putting the numbers together and 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 we really need to have those discussions because so that we, we can we can let our department heads know. We can also let the school know and say, "Hey, hey, school! Just so you know, this is what we're trying to do. So we need we need help on on, on your end also." Joe's got his hand up again. Is that Joe? Yeah. 
Yeah, Tom, totally, totally agree. I think what you said earlier about getting the school people involved and, and some of the other employees in town is too. I think June might be the good time to, to touch base with the school people and say, okay, your school year about over. You need to get a committee together to look at this and, and make a proposal. And, and, and Joe, that's is a very good point. And in, in the past, I, I go back when Herb Sanderson was our treasurer collector. Herb, Herb would be working with the administration in, in that time frame and, and about, you know, if we do, because they, they, the administration has a pretty good pulse. And then, and then Herb would talk to the town administrator and because and, he would have a, a pretty good pulse of, of a pulse of what's happening in the town. So that you, you, you are so right at that. But it, it, it has to be it has to be a conservative thing that and it, and it can't be five weeks before the budgets do. That, that's a t it's tough for us. I mean, I and it can't be serving just the school. There's other people besides the school that are involved with the insurance. I know they're the biggest group. Right. Well, we, <coughs> you always look at just all Especially, the town employees. Right. Period. Right. Because it, personally, I would. Has I, there ever been employees of Spendling? Do they ever have a meeting, an open meeting, just all employees, teachers, DPW, fire, police? Um, does that ever happen? Yeah, we 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 at times we had the insurance. There's an insurance uh, an insurance committee mm -hmm. that's made up of town employees and town administration, and and we have had those discussions in the past. Yes, but but I I and because in your again it's right you you want you, you want people to understand. You're you're you were right when you talked about people looking at the pocketbook, but. You have to, you have to make sure that everyone is aware that okay, we can make it sixty-five percent, but to go to sixty-five percent, these are the things that that are that need to change to make it affordable for the town. And uh, two things. One, I, I'll apologize. I suggested that the discussion start with the personnel committee, and I think that was. Was it was it the end of last year? It might have been the beginning of this year. I don't remember exactly when we started the conversation, but I I said I think the select board would like to hear what the personnel committee's recommendation is first. But if if you want to have those conversations directly, then I'm happy to. Or well, the the personnel committee the the personnel when you're talking insurance by statute. We have to have an insurance committee that's separate from the personnel committee, right? And 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 there's no and, and a lot of times they're the same people, but there there should there 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 has to be a, a that I think you have to have that conversation. You and you have to and and the personnel committee, you know, the board. The boards can suggest something to the personnel committee. Also, yep. they may not agree, mm -hmm. right? Right, and the personnel. The, the, but right. the and, or the finance committee may the finance committee may have a different idea, and 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 that's why that's what's so important is that you have all those the different ideas coming together, and you have that conversation, right? Yeah, and I, and you know the only other thing I wanted to mention is that was thrown out. I think. Last year, when we were talking about wage adjustments and colas, and you know, I said, "Hey, just looking at this number, we sure we can do this. Yeah. It's the same amount to increase the insurance for everybody on the plan from sixty to sixty-five, and we almost did it. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is, it it's hard when you have increase in in salaries of thirty thousand and an increase in insurance right. of a thirty thousand. We couldn't do both." And and that and you know there's been um, a lot of progress, uh, depending on your position. No, it, uh, increases, uh, you know, not. Well, so and, I think it, it's right, and I it's think, a to your point. It's a timing issue, and it's figuring out when. But but every so 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 if the if the town prioritizes going to sixty five percent next year, okay, and that and then. And maybe you're not being able to offer the three hundred and seventy-five dollar 
Longevity. Uh, Longevity. Well, stipend for service. Stipend. Stipend. stipend? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, the marketing stipend. team can call it whatever they want, but they we all know what it is. <laughs> you know. But 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 but, but that can be. And so you can say, and you can say, okay. Now the the problem is, okay, that what we've seen is that num not everybody takes health care. And well, as well, Joe said, as Joe said earlier, well, I'm just looking at my pocketbook. Well, guess what? Well, aren't that, we, aren't, don't we have to look at, at all of all of our right? And that's why we went with the, you know, you're getting more bang for the buck out of the, at least for the non-represented employees out of the salary increase than right. the medical increase. Absolutely, and you but, have to make a choice. I, but I, but I think it's. A, a, and again, it's been a pet peeve for me since the second time I was on the frontier negotiation. I, I, and I, I remember, and it says, we're so hard on the people that have the, 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 the bottom of the pay scale. And, and, and we, it never made sense to me. Those are the people that we should be helping the most. And, and how do you help them? by increasing. Yeah, and you can do that with Frontier, but you can't do it with Union 38 because it, because we pay as that town as opposed to the Frontier doing it. So it's right. mechanically, that makes it challenging in that respect. But there, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with going to the school administration and say, look, this is what we're trying to do for the employees this year. Right. Can you help us? There's nothing wrong with saying that. No, it's an outreach thing, really. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. I right in time. I think there's another piece to it that you brought up. I think you need people on the ground and the floor from the school. They have the momentum now. They can spread it to other employees in Sunderland, but they're going to be the ones that need to explain it to, to their people when the decision's made. Um, if it's just the board making the decision and then they feel slighted in any way, for example, it could be co-pays, could be anything, right. but they, you know, they need to understand what the choices are and what the options are and how the decisions made. I, that's why I like the idea where you said that, you know, they need to get more people in, involved. Totally agree. And that's, yeah, that's and a, typically like in a company when this happens, you know, you have, and it's easier, I understand, at a company, you know, to get everybody together, but like everybody gets together and says, hey, we're going to have a meeting. Here's the changes in the medical plans and right. things like that. Right. So you, we kind of need to do a similar thing. And that's where I, I wonder what services Maya provides. What, right, like can they come out and do a seminar or something? Exactly, and, and also I'm, I'm really interested, can we leverage them to help us gather information from our employees? So right now, we've heard from a few employees, but can Maya help us with a benefit survey, for example. Right, maybe they can. And what benefits are most valued? So right. maybe if we survey the whole population, that's what I'm thinking. What is the survey most valuable like benefit? Kind of yep. And I think that sends two messages: one, they're involved and they get to tell us what is most important, right. and we get a better sense of the entire population and not just the few people that anecdotally. Right. And it helps us because you, then we've got you, valuable you know, information. So. Yes, what and and sometimes we we don't. If if the only thing you if the only thing you're looking at is Deerfield, they're paying sixty five percent. You're paying sixty. But if you're not looking at the entire plan, you don't know the other, and and that sometimes that happens also. So you're not getting you're not getting a total. And you're right, Maya or someone should be able they, to say, yeah. hey, by, because I'm sure they have, I'm sure somebody out there has numbers yeah. about how, I'm sure the insurance companies know exactly how. And it's not even how do we compare against other towns, but how do our people feel about their, what do they most value? Yeah. It's a survey directly to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree. Right, but Maya can probably even give you information on what what's your average age range of 18 to 25 pays out of pocket per year mm -hmm. versus their cost. Yeah, I'm sure they do yeah. all they types have of- have all that information. All that I mean, data. Yeah. It's all there. It's the insurance business. They right. have all that. But, but, wow. So that helps yeah. too that- you, you know what, Crystal? What? In, in your experiences, 
I've never worked in an insurance company, but I would say the by our doing the sixty percent with the co you know, all the other things, somebody somebody in an insurance company that knows a lot about numbers would probably say the out of pockets is probably the same as somebody paying that gets sixty five percent with a co pay structure that they have. All depends on the person. Ah, uh, well, that's good. Well, it really point. depends on the population. Yeah. Right, because right, some that, people, to, to your point, right, it, it all depends on how much medical services you require. Right, and that's why doing it, if I'm, sh and again, I'm sure they can break it down by age group, right? Yeah. Because unfortunately, Jeff, that's going to be <laughs> you'll have to call Maya to get the ball rolling. But no, they they've been really helpful yeah, in this good. whole process, yeah. and um, yeah, and the, I think. I, I asked them when I saw that our plans were different. I said, "How does our plan compare, you know, statewide to all your clients?" And I think, I think we're in the top twenty-five percent of in every category, in every category. lowest copayments. And, see, and like that's a you know, good piece of information. It, it's to get out the really a rich oh, benefit. Maybe that. it's too rich. I mean, maybe that's what we're. <clears throat> well, but we don't. Who's whose job is it to sell? Well, no. Well, a, we, I, we, we, we're going to put you in the top hat in the tail because you're the ringleader, <coughs> right? I like it. But that's what maybe microphone. we can save oh, ourselves some grief though and have Maya. No, both. <laughs> we both time. Yeah, we absolutely. Both I mean, they're an administrator. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I don't. They, they uh, administer the plan. But, right. but we don't. But we don't. We and, and you know and that's a that's a kind of an important thing to tell people. But they don't. They don't. They don't hear that. Honestly, you could even schedule a Zoom call. Do you know what I mean? Have them do a seminar on Zoom because then I'm just thinking like, oh, it'd be great to get everybody together. But can you imagine trying to schedule and coordinate around teachers and everybody else? But set up a Zoom call. You know, then you could do it. But I think we we got to look at it because there's no sense discussing that too much tonight because we need more information. We got to talk to that. All right, but but we're not. And, and again, like I said, in our treasurer collector. Is, is that the, in, in almost every town, is that the right person to be having doing HR work? Wow. That's it's it's a tough really job. Good. I know it's a tough job. I wouldn't want to do HR. We've been struggling with that for years. It's difficult. Oh my gosh. It's very difficult and time consuming. No, because it's a, well, no, it's because a whole separate to job. Ask questions <laughs> about it is. Not only that, but the life insurance questions and right. yep. disability, disability insurance questions and in COVID questions. COVID questions. Yeah. Yep. All right. Changing so, what else you want to talk about in the budget? Um, I guess if there were, uh, obviously, we're you know we can't finalize it until we know what the free cash number was. No. But if there were other areas that you wanted me to take a closer look at, either on the revenue or expense side, um, then I I would be happy to do that otherwise I'll continue to so so did did you have a con conversation with baseball about are we doing anything with are we going to expand are we moving baseball to a town in rec or uh, what did you know about that similar to my converse <laughs> to the conversation this evening I, I think I met with them last week two mm -hmm. weeks ago and I said look you know this is a tough time to be coming and, and saying we need help. Um, so what I suggested is, hey, we need to have a... It, I'm not the decision maker, first and foremost. I think we need to talk to the community. There's a cost to the town if you want the town to take over. And, and I hear Sunderland Youth Baseball saying that they want the town to take over, but I haven't heard from taxpayers that that there's a willingness to um, pay for it or reduce services to cover it in other areas um, so I, I you know I said I think that that you haven't been able to hold your fundraiser for a couple of years and I think that if you're looking at a I, I'm I think we need to continue this conversation and plan for fiscal year 24 and I think that if if their Sunderland Youth Baseball is struggling, one of the uses of ARPA funds is economic recovery, and you clearly have not been able to hold your fundraiser, which funds the majority of it for three years. Yep. I would, I would 
put in a, a request for, for some ARPA funds. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, let's talk about it and help the recreation coordinator and myself understand what is involved in taking over a, a baseball league not program. the league to the program. town teams the, the yeah. town teams. program yeah so it, it is not in this budget is the short answer okay we're talking about capital next week uh capital planning is meeting tomorrow, tomorrow. night and i think that they will have a, a recommended budget that was their their internal deadline. It was mid March. That covers my select board update too. <laughs> well, it's after nine. We got to move things along. It, well, yeah, because we still have to close the town meeting warrant. Yeah. So there, there may be one additional article that we're gonna ha maybe have to add, depending on how DOR deals with this free cash, free cash. situation we're going with, but. Um, yeah, but we haven't gotten any additional uh, requests no for warrant articles. Um, if you want, briefly, I think the main warrant articles, obviously, operating budget, capital budget, uh, warrant article for the sick time buyback for um, elementary school employees who are retiring, a... Uh, Frontier capital request for about 18,000 for our portion of a walk-in cooler replacement. Yeah. Um, the request by the schools for a revolving loan fund for foster student transportation. Um, we can now receive funds for reporting on foster student transportation and then spend it on foster student transportation, but it, the way the law was written, it says without further appropriation, and so the interpretation is it has to be in a revolving fund in order to expend it without further appropriation. Okay. Um, another capital uh, warrant article for phase two of the senior center needs assessment. Um, the warrant article for the rejoining the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District and uh, an amendment to the holiday bylaws, okay. as well as the consent yeah. articles and Article One, the usual and, stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, kind of small compared to. Past Anything else from the finance committee? Jeff had a question on the town insurance. Um, yes. Is it 2021? There was a big bump. You wrote in your comments. My end chub increased oh. from 75 to 100. Yes, and then it went back down. Yeah, is that a one time? I'm just concerned. Um, Will that. Yeah, what was the comment? There so Maya was 84, Chubb was 16. It, it included, I think, I think that year I double counted uh, workers' comp. Okay. And Chubb might be workers' comp. I just didn't want to have another right no year that we didn't anticipate. Uh, um, two fourteen, row two fourteen. Oh, there it is. And yeah, right there. Yeah, is this? I think it's the next year comment that I. Okay. And of course, it's not coming up. I will get that answer for yeah, you. Yeah, I just, I mean, it looks like it's a blip, but just to make sure. Um, your comment? Yeah, I think, yeah, you might have put workers' comp in two places. Yeah. The job was in both places. Yeah. Okay, yep, that's good. Okay. Yep. Anything else? No. Okay, so at this time I will entertain a motion to conduct, to go into executive session pursuant to Master and Law Chapter 38, Section 21, Paragraph 2, to, co to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non union personnel. So, motion. 
Second. Roll call vote. Aye. Dave Pierce. Aye. Crystal. Aye. Tom. Don't remember my I, last names. I, I, I can't say it. Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry. What's that? Did you want to vote to close the warrant before you enter executive session? You didn't <clears throat> add anything to it. No. Wh okay. Why would Why would we close it? What What structure yeah, What structure it, What What structure does closing the warrant besides our bylaw saying it's closed now? What would it do? Uh, Between doing it now or next week? I think we need to wait till next week, right? Because you might have that other one. I, I think this is for. I think you can. The select board can still add and remove articles. I think it's for everybody else, right? No. No, that the closing it closes yeah. it's yeah. for Close. everybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then yes, I would. Yeah. Please oh, don't wait a week. Yeah. Don't want to mess up that free cash stuff. <laughs> All right. So we will be going to executive session to talk about uh, uh, a couple items for contracts. We will be returning to open session only to adjourn. We will no vote. We won't be taking any votes in open session, except for adjournment. Yep. So we will we will go downstairs. Thank you. Have you uh, brought some coffee?